Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and I'm just going to do a little bit of brick pointing. Actually, this wall here is going to be knocked down. I'm going to demolish it to build a small extension, but I thought, what a waste. It's a lovely wall to demonstrate a little bit of brick pointing on. So that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to take you through step by step. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about brick pointing and some of them I take issue with. The first thing, most important thing, is to get that mix right. And a lot of videos tell you that three to one is a good mix it isn't you don't want to make the mix stronger than the original mortar that's in the joints now if it's an old victorian house like this and we've got sand and lime we really don't want to be anything stronger than about five to one if you're doing a canal bridge you've got engineering bricks it's totally soaked all the time then you can go for something like a two to one or a three to one but in the normal course of events three to one is much too strong it'll trap the moisture in and it will crack, allowing water to track in behind the mortar. And then when the frost comes, it'll push it out. So don't do that. Make a decent mix, five to one, probably plenty. A little bit of building sand, which is a softer sand. You can do it all with building sand. One ordinary Portland cement. It's not the fancy stuff. The premium cement has got additives in it so that you don't need to use any plasticizer or lime. Now this is a concentrated mortar plasticizer. We only need the tiniest, tiniest drop and that will give us plenty of plasticizer. Okay, so this is a bit sloppier than I intended actually. That's due to the plasticizer. And normally I would hose this wall down first and leave it all day and try not to work in the sun because the sun had dried out too quickly and it'll crack. But in this case, because it's a demo, I'm not doing that. Now that is a pointing trowel and you can see what that does. It requires a reasonable amount of dexterity to use it. So what I tend to prefer is this, because if you look at that, I've selected a filler, the width of the brick. And you can see just by picking off, it's automatically gonna give you the right width every time. You just poke it in there. What we're trying to do, we're trying to avoid that really that little bit of smudge on the brickwork there. But these are what we call the perpendicular joints, also known as the perps, and fill those in first before we do anything else. Now, this is how people do pointing. Slowly but surely, laboriously, along they go, which is why people charge a lot of money for it, because who wants to do that? So what I'd like to introduce you to is what I consider to be one of the best inventions from Marshalltown and that is a tuck pointing tool. Now you can get these for about three quid, but the steel on them is horrible. This one from Marshalltown, I've had for years and it will last for years. You can see it's nice and flexible. It's a good bit of carbon steel on there. And so long as you keep it clean, we just get the hook like that and we put it up against the wall there. And all we do is that. And the only reason I was showing you how to do it with the pointing trowel is because I wanted to show you how laborious it is compared to this method. So there's your investment. If you buy nothing else, buy yourself a nice tuck pointer. It doesn't have to be a Marshalltown one, so long as it's a nice one. And you see the difference. You see how much faster you can go. It takes no skill. We're not worried about that bit there. You'll see why as we continue, we just put that on the bottom of the joint and we just iron it in. And the lovely thing is that we're getting loads of pressure. We're really pushing that joint in there nicely. Tuck pointer all day long. There are tremendously skilled people, much more skilled than myself, who will take a tuck pointer and they will do the perps with it as well. And I find that, I find that very difficult. Even if you're going to use this to rub it up with, you're better off using the tuck pointer to put it in with, because then you can just go along and rub those joints in as they start to dry. And that will give you a nice finish. They're a bit the odd low spot there. Thing about these bricks, they're 
they're not uniform. If you were doing this with a, an engineering brick, something modern that was manufactured uniformly, you would probably finish up with a very, very nice crisp line all the way along there. But you'll see that we're not gonna achieve that here. When you're doing weather strap, by the way, it's the same principle, but you bring it out slightly more and then you cut it off with a Frenchman. But maybe we'll do that later because as I say, it's not best suited to an old house. Unless you've got a very strong arm, don't load up too much because it is heavy. By the end of the day, you'll know you've done it if you're not used to working like this. I learnt by watching a few people. That was before YouTube came along. And um, what I was doing mostly was just chimney stacks. I did a couple of chimney stacks for people. Because I'm a plumber, we used to do the lead work. And then if you did the lead work, it was just a natural progression to say, all right, well, it needs pointing. I'll point it, I'll reflaunch it, I'll do all those bits and pieces. And because it was a chimney stack, because it was a bit far up, it didn't actually matter. You didn't have to make a brilliant, brilliant job of the pointing because from the street, it looks good. You used to be able to get a job dangling off the building. I've done a few of those. Made myself up a little bosun's chair, got a rope, and up I went. I actually worked on the Savoy Hotel in London at one time. Couldn't believe it. I was subcontracting for this guy who got the job. He didn't want to see any certificates or anything. He said, yeah, you can do it, mate. If you can do it, you can do it. And up I was on the Savoy, dangling about. All the people watching me, waiting for me to fall. You could tell that. They come out for their lunch hour. They sit there in that little Savoy Gardens around the back, looking up, thinking, when's he gonna fall? I actually own a pointing gun and I don't use it very much. And why don't I use it very much? Well, it keeps getting clogged. Unless you actually use a, a pre-mixed bag mortar with it, you get a little stone in it and it doesn't want to know. So it's a great machine if you've got pre-mixed, which you can get obviously, but most builders merchants won't stock a pre-mix because they don't sell enough of it. So it's only going to work out for you if, um, if you've got yourself a big commercial job, you can specify the mix, specify the color or somebody specifies it. You set yourself up with a gun, away you go. But the other thing is, that sometimes a bit over creamy. So even though it go in, when you start ironing it up, as they call it, compressing it, you'll find that it's just a load of cream. So you don't want the bricks wet because if the bricks wet, you find all this mortar will stain through. It'll start bleeding onto the face of the brickwork. Now this is beginning to go off. It started out sloppy and now it's quite tight. So what you should really avoid doing too much is knocking it up again. In other words, don't go and knock up a whole cement mixer full of pointing mix and then find that you're having to add water to it all day because once it started going off, it weakens it quite a lot. A bit of history there, something's gone wrong brick split but we don't need to worry about anything we can just feed a bit in there keep the weather out thing is about thing is about all this on day one it might all look a bit stark you might think oh goodness look at that but a few weeks down the line, when the weather's got on it, the whole thing starts to look like it's been there a while. So you're probably wondering. Me? No, sorry, Johnny. I'm talking to the camera now. You're on. You're on it, Johnny. You're on the movie now. It's my next door neighbour. He's in his zone now. He's in his exclusion, his isolation zone going crazy 
looking after his three kids. And really start to put some pressure on as it sets, as it dries out. You'll find you can wrap it up. My other toy is this big hawk. And the idea of that one is that we get it set along there and then we just run the gear in and then we're really flying. And uh, I got sent this by somebody, the inventor basically. And uh, I don't know what happened, whether he ever got it out there because I don't see them around. They're good because the handle's there, it, it rests on your arm. So although you might think it's quite heavy, it's actually a lot easier on the wrist. So once you get there, and you've started to wind it all up and it's all starting to look all right, you can just take the edge of your trowel and go off over the whole thing, just wiping off any of the snots that you find around. And then the final thing, which I might show you, but I might not, is to get yourself a bit of old cloth sacking. Sacking, hessian sack is the best if you can still get a hold of it anywhere. Get yourself a bit of hessian. And when it's really gone off, maybe about an hour from now, and it's starting to pick up nicely, then just give it all a light rub over with a bit of hessian. or even a paintbrush. Paintbrush is quite nice. You've got a soft bristle paintbrush. It'll just take those marks out. Give you... Some people don't like this slight smoothness on the, on the mortar. They like it to be coarser. And if you want that coarse finish rather than a smooth finish like that, then all you've got to do is get yourself a bit of wood and rub it down. In fact, I'll go and get a bit and we'll shoot. I'll show you what it looks like. Here's a bit of wood. And if you just look at that, we can just run that piece of wood across there just to take out all that stuff. I quite like the look of that actually. I'm not averse to that. It's wide enough that it doesn't get buried in there. And you can see what it does. Just gives you a slight coarseness. Takes out the trail marks, but some people like the trail marks.